to this edition of Where Are They Now? Quarantine Edition from Wild Horse Productions. I'm Carol Scott, Executive Director of Wild Horse Productions. And with me this morning is one of our amazing alumni, Henry Wilson. Hi, Henry. Hi, Hi Carol. You? <laughs> I'm good. How are you doing? Good. It's so good to see you. Ah, I good just miss everybody, you. and this is making me so nostalgic and just missing you guys more. So, well, yeah, digging through photos and everything made me, oh my gosh, like so many, so many memories. I know. So when, I was, when I was looking through the ones you were sending, it really jogged my memory, and I was hysterical. We'll talk about um, some of the shows you did and the parts <laughs> you did. <laughs> yes, yeah, I did some good parts. So um, what I've been asking everyone first, because I have no idea, is where you are quarantining and if it is where you currently live. Um, I'm quarantining in Carson City with my parents, which is not where I currently live. Um, I am living in LA, but I came down um, just for a, a three-day weekend, and then all of this started, so I've now been here for almost four weeks. <laughs> wow. So yeah. that so you didn't even plan to stay, because I have a lot of people that said they knew it was happening, and they came back to quarantine with their folks or somewhere right. safer than LA. So you just kind of got stuck here. I, yeah, I did. It was it was right before like the kind of lockdown started, and I just decided that I would just avoid that at all in LA and stay here. So I'm sure everybody is happy that you're here and safe and not in LA. Yes, yeah, yeah. I am too. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So um, we're talking about Wild Horse for our young actors who may be watching this. Can you tell yeah. us? Um, how old you were when you started with Wild Horse, uh, what, were you, what was your first memory or your first show, and the other shows you've done with us? Um, my first show with Wild Horse was uh, Charlotte's Web in 2008. I was 10 years old, which I think that was the first Wild Horse children's production, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah, so that was, that was my first show there, and I played Lurby the farmhand, which was very exciting to me. <laughs> and then I did every single Wild Horse show between then and December of 2014. So I was doing two or three productions every year for six years. Wow. Um, and, and a lot of people were in our first production of Charlotte's Web that I've talked to. And I do remember you as Lurvy. And I think, <laughs> I don't know if you sent me a picture or not, but I know Melody or Monica sent me one that you were in it. So I'm going to okay. set that to be put into this video also. Um, okay, can you me... tell us about some of your other roles with Wild Horse? Because you have done some challenging roles. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think the most challenging role I did, um, and it's kind of funny, was I think right after Charlotte's Web was um, The Jungle Book. And I played Shere Khan the Tiger. And your only note to me every single rehearsal was that I needed to keep my arms big and scary. I could not do that for some reason. I dropped them every time. And you'd say, Henry, give me arms. And I just could not stay like a tiger. Um, so that was a big challenge. Very fun. That's, that's, that's challenging. <laughs> Probably challenging <laughs> for a 10 year old or an eight year old. I don't know how old you were then. Yeah, I do I was remember that. I, love it. I think. Um, Shannon was uh, the little jungle boy in that. In that okay. <laughs> yep, she was. That's so um, funny. I forgot about so many shows. Um, and as you grew up, you took some bigger roles uh, yes. and some fun roles. So can you tell us about some of those? Um, I think one of my, the first parts that I got really excited about that was a little bit bigger was uh, Sir Harry in Once Upon a Mattress. Um, that was so much fun. Um, I had never kind of played the leading knight in shining armor type before that. Um, and that was just so much fun. All of my friends were in that one. Um, and played Prince Eric in The Little Mermaid, um, which I actually just watched the other day. It was very fun and so many memories. It's so crazy. Like, you don't think about it for a while, and then so much comes up that you just... Right. So much work was put into it. Do you remember what um, your last show was and how old you were? Last show was Hairspray oh. um, in 2014, and I played Edna Turnblad. Um, uh, uh, what is her name? T not Tina. Um, 
Trixie? Tracy. Tracy. Tracy mom. <laughs> um, and that, I think that was the most fun I'd ever had with a part in any show ever. It was just such a blast. It was so silly to be such a big personality, literally and figuratively. Um, that actually made me laugh the most when I looked at the photos you sent. <laughs> Remembering you as Edna Turnblatt in those giant costumes and that big wig and the wig with the curlers in it. Yeah. <laughs> you are spectacular in that part, Henry. <laughs> Thank you so much. I think, uh, my mom said the first opening night, this was the part you were born to play. <laughs> <laughs> that is funny. You were. It was great. Do you have a, a, a backstage moment or an onstage moment that you remember, like, the craziest thing that happened or the funniest thing that happened? Um, I think one of the craziest things that happened, and it, it wasn't funny at the time, but I think it's funny now. Um, I had a quick change as Edna, um, where I had to go from the kind of drab Edna outfit to the fabulous, big, sparkly, welcome to the 60s number. And I went backstage and I took off the first dress and it got stuck on my fat suit. And they could not get it off for anything. And I was trying to put the other one on. So I had like four people pulling on me and putting the dress on me at the same time. And I remember them saying, you're cute, you're cute, you're cute. I was about to miss it. I had to like run on stage. Um, and so I finally got the dress on and I started walking on stage and then I tripped on my heel. And so then I was stumbling on stage and ran on, like, I think I was a couple seconds late for my cue that night. And it's, it's more funny now, but just thinking about all the chaos that goes backstage, especially with so many kids all around and, you know, the teeny space in a fat suit, like. Right, was... things, that, things that the audience doesn't know, you know? Exactly. And you yeah. handle it so beautifully and it's the magic of theater. People exactly. have no idea what's going on backstage. Or, right. it, and that, that's what makes me the proudest when I see you guys make the entrances even though there might be chaos backstage or in a small right. space. I think right. that part, what you're talking about, was actually when you were making this huge entrance mm -hmm. uh, through, I don't know, it, was, it wasn't through the can, was it through the can, the big giant hairspray can? No, we had, there was just like a, um, we had tinsel hanging in like a doorway that I burst through. Right, that was the, when, yeah, you're first getting changed into the fabulous yes. person. That's amazing, Henry. Well, things that we don't know that happen backstage. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, can you tell us what you're doing now? Yeah. Um, I actually, so after uh, Hairspray, I was heavily involved in the um, drama program at the high school. And then I graduated. And I didn't really have a plan, but a bunch of my friends, all of which I made through Wild Horse, um, were already down in Los Angeles. And so I just decided to kind of wing it and go down there. And I auditioned for a few things and didn't book anything. Um, and I started taking a class, a photography class through the extension program at UCLA. And um, through that, I, I um, made an acquaintance with uh, a celebrity photographer and assisted him on a few jobs. And from there, photography kind of just took off for me. So I, I kind of have put performing aside for right now and have been doing um, photography and some music video work. Um, I, uh, one of the things that I admire most in my favorite photographer's work is uh, the world that they build or the sets. Um, and so I wanted to learn how to do set design. And my best friend Colton, who I also met through Wild Horse, he was working at the American Musical Dramatics Academy um, and I asked if I could maybe get a job there and I applied and thanks to help from him and from you, um, writing me a glowing, re uh, <laughs> review, <laughs> I uh, got the job and I'm working there now on the production staff. Um, and we do all of the technical work, the lighting, the sound design, the, um, set design and building for the shows that go on there. Um, and that's been, I mean, that's been huge in, uh, teaching me so many skills. Um, I've learned how to do some set design and that's gotten me jobs actually on a few projects like music videos where I've done the set design for those. Um, I just did one, I can't really say much about it because it's not released yet, but I did the set design for it and it was a big budget and this big project and I was like the head of the art department and that was wow. such a, it felt so 
important and scary. <laughs> <laughs> that is um, wonderful. I'm so yeah, happy to hear. I knew all about your photography. Uh, we're going to show us some photography soon, yeah. which I'm really happy to see. I follow you on Facebook. I follow everybody on Facebook and kind of mm -hmm. see where you're going. And I love, Henry, I've seen so many of your photographs that have evoked so much um, feeling in me, oh. just looking at the photographs. Um, they're Thank just beautiful so and I can tell that your talent for that. And I'm so glad to hear that you're doing um, tech work because I, I tell people about a tech track and actually that's where you make money. <laughs> exactly, yep, exactly. That is how I pay the bills. <laughs> <laughs> so can you share some of your photography with us? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so the first one is of Melody. I did the scenic design, um, she's in um kind of 20s glamour um the the concept it's the title of the piece is called the drinking bird um and it's kind of a that was when i first turned 21 i was in los angeles and i got into the party scene a little bit and saw the chaos of that and i i had some friends that kind of got taken down by that scene um and so she's she's surrounded by empty bottles and they're actually if you take a close look they're drinking birds hiding um within the bottles and she's next to a bird cage and she has her feather in her hair. Um, so that's, that's kind of the inspiration for that. I wanted it to be very old Hollywood, very glamorous. Um, and she, we had so much fun on that, that shoot. That was such a blast. Um, the next one is of Colton, um, who has been one of my best friends since I was 13. And he kind of, from a very young age introduced me to the idea of philosophy um, and opened my eyes in that way a lot. And I wanted to photograph him kind of as like a, a philosopher, kind of a magical philosopher. So um, one of the, the biggest perks of working at AMDA is I have an entire prop warehouse that if I ask nicely, they'll let me borrow props for my own shoots. Wow. That, um, you know, he has his pipe and a candelabra and, um, I showed it to all of our friends and they just said, that is so Colton. Like that is just, that is what Colton looks like. Um, that is his spirit. <laughs> um, and maybe one more is of Hannah Hartman, another alumni, my, one of my best friends. Um, we, this one is one of my favorite shoots and one of my favorite memories. Um, we were living together actually. She was my first roommate in Los Angeles and we just wanted to get away and we took a road trip to death valley and went to the sand dunes and i made her in some like in a teeny skirt and shirt um we hiked like a mile into the desert with these suitcases full of clocks and we put the clocks up everywhere and the suitcases around her and the, the concept is kind of uh you know the sands of time getting lost in time where is the time gone kind of thing um and that was it's just so much fun like it's uh, I definitely use a lot of theatricality in my photos. I always think of the story um, that I'm trying to tell. Um, I use lighting that I've learned through theater. Um, and it's just, it, it reminds me a lot of being in, in the shows because um, it's just storytelling and just building a world and, and a character. And it's, it's so much fun to capture that. It's so nice to see uh, the, the theater arts coming through in so many of our alumni's careers. Uh, it's, yeah, it's absolutely. Just beautiful. The, these pictures are so beautiful, uh, Henry. And do you know what picture stands out to me all the time? And I don't know if you sent it to me or not. If you haven't, maybe you can. Is the one of you leaning against the um, phone booth. I think you took it at lunch. Uh, how funny. <laughs> I love that photo. That's actually, I went, Colton was living in London at the time, um, and I went to visit him. I was only there for three days because I could only afford a ticket that was like a three-day round trip. Um, so I went to visit him, and Colton actually took that photograph of me um, when we were wandering around London. That's beautiful. And Maybe that's you could send me that also so I can put it up here and show everybody, because I think that captures you. I, you. You, know, you have grown <laughs> so much and that photo, I just love that photo. It's just amazing. Thank you so much. Um, so why, I, you're kind of still in the arts though. So mm -hmm. can you tell me why you didn't pursue a career performing 
because, you know, you were one of our stars, one of our stellar performers. So can you tell me what, why, why you took the career path you took? I think, honestly, I, I would love to still be performing right now. Um, I think, frankly, what happened was photography kind of just took off and it started working out. And so I've been able to make money and make connections and network um, in Los Angeles. Um, before this whole quarantine happened, um, I actually had my first celebrity shoot booked where I would have a celebrity in front of my camera. I was very excited for that. Obviously, it has to be postponed because we're in a pandemic. Can you tell um, us who the celebrity was? Or is that like a secret? It's a secret until it's done. <laughs> but I will <laughs> be sure to tell you as soon as it is. Um, but it just it just really worked out. And I, what I kind of found was, you know, all the hard growing up lessons was once you get a job and you're paying bills and everything, I felt like I kind of had to focus on one thing and I didn't have enough time to be able to, to audition and perform and do photography and all of that. Um, but it's been on my radar and I've been talking to all of my friends um, and family that I'm going to just start keeping an eye out for auditions for musicals. Um, I cool. definitely think I would want to stay in theater versus like film or TV. Well, that, um, that segues right into, do you have a dream role? <laughs> dream role. Um, I would really love, I think it's a tie between Marius in Les Mis or Raul in Phantom of the Opera. Wow. Those good good aspirations. Be. I could see you in both of those. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. So as soon as you book that, you let us know, we'll come down and oh, see you. Well. Get you front row seats. <laughs> okay. Um, do you have any advice for our rising stars? I hope a lot of our young people are watching this. And do you have any advice of, you know, they may be aspiring to go to Broadway or perform or to do something else in their lives? What advice would you give them? My biggest advice is to, to go for it. Um, I think, especially growing up in a place like Carson City, going somewhere like New York or, or Los Angeles can seem very scary. Um, but I think the, big, the best thing that I did for myself was just go. I didn't have any plan at all. I just went to Los Angeles and it's worked out really good for me. Um, and I would also say, just stay creative. If you want to be a performer, keep auditioning, um, keep reading plays, keep um, doing character studies. Um, if you don't want to perform, find another way to artistically express yourself um, in whatever way you can, because that, I think, is our gift as artists, and I think it's our purpose um, in our lives, if we have these kind of talents, is to share them and to, uh, to create new things. That's wonderful. Thank you for that great advice for everyone that's watching. Um, I have been so proud of you, Henry, and watching what you're, you're, what you're doing in the world and how you're sharing your passion and your amazing creative talents. Um, I love photography and um, I love photography that makes me uh, look at it and evoke uh, a feeling and yours always does and it's always interesting. I mean, you like <laughs> like you said, the, how you build a set around your, um, your image, it's just amazing to me. So um, thank you. I, I thank you for that and thanks for, for continuing on in the arts and, and sharing your passion with the world. Um, I, we are so proud of you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. I owe so much of it to you, to you and Pat. Um, you seriously, I think, shaped the, my, my entire life, the path of my life. So I owe, I owe all of it to you guys, I think. Well, your talent shines through, so. Um, Thank thanks you. again. Thanks for taking this time from your quarantine. <laughs> oh, boy. <You're> so busy. <laughs> and, and please say hi to the family that's quarantining with you. We miss the family oh, no. also. Tell everybody <laughs> hello. And um, please keep us informed of everything that you're doing, okay? Okay, and, I will. I uh, hope to see you at our shows when we are on stage again. Yes, absolutely. I will be there. Th thank you again, Henry. Thank Talk you, to Karen. you soon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Where are they now? Quarantine edition.